Okay, we are the nonlinear transmission line team. And what that means is basically with a standard transmission line, the goal is just to carry an input voltage to the load and keep it in its natural form that it comes from the start. And with a nonlinear transmission line, you take something like this square pulse that you see at the bottom right and turn it into RF oscillations. And these are typically very high power oscillations as well, which is what's unique to this, this specific thing. So what are NLTLs needed for? So NLTL systems are utilized to sharpen pulses, for example, by using the components along the line. This is done by allowing high amplitude waves travel to form an electromagnetic shock wave. Oscillations are also desired from NLTLs so that they can occur at high repetition rates. And this is needed because it's consistent of the RF output. Therefore, this can be used for both low and high power applications. Our uh, NLTL, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. They do gyromagnetic in other ways, but with specifically, we want to do a lump model. Uh, this makes it easy to construct and test and also kind of design around, but also it gets a match frequency in this design of 500 megahertz area, which is going to be perfect for our use case. And if you could look at this model on the right, you could see it's just a standard transmission line model. Uh, but instead of having those natural values of capacitance and inductance that are just in the line naturally, we're going to be inserting actual capacitors and inductors in there. Uh, and specific, specifically in our case, the capacitors will have nonlinear uh, tendencies, which gives us the effect that we've been talking about. So from our sponsor, Lockheed, we've been getting a couple of requirements and constraints. They want the output to be somewhere in the range of 50 to 100 megahertz, uh, which is perfectly capable with the lump model. And then the voltage input is going to be from another team also working with Lockheed. Uh, and we're expecting somewhere in the range of all from 500 all the way up to 5,000 volts. And with that much of a range, we are basically designing our, our, our project to be able to handle any different range so we can uh, adapt to whatever comes our way. And then that will be coupled to an antenna ideally down the road with that uh, RF oscillation going into that. Here you see our block diagram. Uh, you can see there's three major, major sections in the middle. Uh, so we, we identify a section basically as an inductor capacitor pair. And we've just decided overall through research that we will ideally focus towards having a 24 stage towards the end. But you can see on the left, it comes from the Marx generator, which gives us that square pulse, or ideally square pulse. And then through our NLTL, we will be producing somewhere between 50 to 100 megahertz of oscillations couple to a 50 to 100 ohm uh, antenna. So what it means for a nonlinear transmission line to be nonlinear is that there is no linear relationship between voltage and current. This is achieved either by using ferroelectric or ferromagnetic materials. These materials exhibit hysteresis loops from applied electric fields or magnetic fields, and these materials can either be composites with nonlinear additions or just uh, piezoelectric materials. These hysteresis effects lead to these RF oscillations that we we're looking for, and that's pretty much the desired effect. Uh, the desired effect of this for ferroelectric materials, the crystalline structure itself makes the oscillations. These oscillations cause the voltage ripple that we're looking for, uh, and it allows us to create our lump dispersive NLTL. So basically, with this whole nonlinear thing, how you characterize that or how you view that from actual parts that you'd order is you would look at the capacitance versus the voltage curve. So to do that, there's not really any manufacturer data sheets that's gonna be giving those informations out typically. So we will have to be testing that manually and then we can insert this actual graph and information into simulations. And then ideally we could order a bunch of different capacitors that we think will fit our use, uh, test them, and then look at how they would work in the simulation. And then we can move forward with whichever ones are the best fit that we see from that. Here's a circuit we're using for part testing on the capacitors. So it's simple. We just have a high voltage supply to put charge on the uh, capacitor we're testing. Big blocking capacitor to isolate the meter, and the rest is all just to protect the meter. Here's our testing setup in the lab. The only thing we've added is a charge slash dump circuit for added safety. Here's the one CV curve we had spec on a data sheet. So we were going to use this for validation of our testing results. And here's some sample low voltage testing results. So we have a currently made a 12 stage NLTL, uh, basically just as a placeholder for whenever the Marx team is ever ready with their project. We'd have this as something that we think ideally based off simulations and data we've looked at will fit. 
And if this does work out, we, we're in, we'll know early on that we're in the right direction and we can move forward either with going to the 24 stage of this design or maybe you will uh, give us a red flag that we're in, heading in the wrong direction completely. But as of right now, this is close to what the final uh, design will look like just with more stages uh, and ideally similar parts of this. In this video, we show some of the testing that has taken place in the power lab where we are conducting both low and high voltage testing on our nonlinear capacitors with Z5U dielectric. Measurements are taken across the MOV and the purpose of this is to make sure that our capacitors are degrading well for us. A dump resistor circuit is also being utilized to de-energize. Thank you.